Hello everyone. Today I'm going to speak about Gross National Happiness or GNH. This is my country, Bhutan's development, vision and philosophy. The journey down this path really began in earnest early in the reign of His Majesty the Fourth King, Jigme Singhi Wangchuk, when he stated GNH is more important than GNP. It was really presenting an alternative development paradigm with a clear focus on what really matters, the well-being of the people. So what is GNH or Gross National Happiness? It is really about development that places the happiness of the people at the center of the government's development agenda. It is based on the idea that ultimately what people really desire from life is happiness and that if this is the case, then the focus of the government must in turn be creating conditions through policies and programs that enable the pursuit and attainment of happiness. This then shifts development agenda from a narrow preoccupation with economic growth to a more holistic and thereby sustainable development. During the reign of His Majesty the Fourth King, the priority of the royal government was on strengthening what is popularly referred to as the four pillars of gross national happiness, namely sustainable and equitable socio-economic development, where the focus was on the provision of free education and health services, poverty reduction, rural development, and the creation of jobs, etc. Second pillar, conservation of the natural environment, under which Bhutan committed to maintain 60% of land under forest cover for all time to come, declared over 50% of the country as protected areas, and put in place strong environmental safeguards way before it became fashionable. Under the pillar of preservation and promotion of culture and traditions, national language, architecture, social etiquette, traditional festivals and games, everything that makes up social fabric were promoted. And under the fourth pillar, good governance, strengthening the rule of law, putting in place strong measures to keep Bhutan corruption free, improved public service delivery, etc., were the main focus. His Majesty the Fourth King abdicated in favor of His Majesty the Fifth and present King Jigmi Gesa Namge Wangchuk in 2006 and transitioned Bhutan into a democratic constitutional monarchy in 2008. This historic change was spearheaded by His Majesty the present King soon after his enthronement. Thereafter, democratically elected leaders govern the country. However, to ensure that Bhutan continues to be guided by the vision and philosophy of gross national happiness as required under Article 9.2 of the Constitution, concrete steps were taken under the guidance of His Majesty the King. Firstly, a GNH index to guide and gauge Bhutan's progress towards GNH was created since none of the existing indices were found to be suitable. Secondly, an organization called the GNH Commission with the mandate to create policies and programs that lead towards gross national happiness was established. Thirdly, periodic surveys were instituted and conducted to monitor progress against this holistic development index. And finally, tools were also created to screen policies to ensure they promote GNH. So what is the GNH or Gross National Happiness Index made up of? It is made up of nine domains and 33 indicators that can be used for measurement and assessment. We believe the nine domains capture holistically everything that matters to people and thus should form the basis for government intention and action. 
Five out of the nine domains are common to the development and policy making agenda of most countries, but four are more unique to Bhutan. The five which are more conventional are health, education, living standards, good governance, and ecological diversity and resilience. These are all important for well being, but self explanatory, and so I will not dwell on them. The remaining four domains are psychological well-being, cultural diversity and resilience, time use and community vitality. Let me explain briefly what and why these domains are important. Community vitality domain captures the strength of human relationships, not only among families and friends, but also among strangers through random acts of kindness, donations, volunteerism, etc. For human beings, relationships are proven to be key to one's happiness and indicators in this domain capture these aspects. Cultural diversity and resilience domain captures all that shapes and makes the society one grows up in. The time use domain recognizes the most important and finite resource that human beings are endowed with to achieve whatever they want to achieve in life. Time is life and its use is critical to whether people achieve happiness or not, however they choose to define it. By keeping a focus on it, we hope to avoid negative trade-offs of development, such as long commute to work, which is proven to be a low quality use of significant chunks of people's life as they live further and further away from their workplace a consequence of not paying attention to this critical domain when designing cities and its impact on where people live and work. Finally, we have psychological well-being, which looks at the mental health of people as the best indicator of their well-being. Rise in the number of people facing mental health issues, suicides, etc. in developed countries are a sign that increase in income alone does not lead to well-being and happiness. They are still in paradox. Under this domain, we focus on happiness skills like introducing meditation in schools so that our children benefit from greater mindfulness and mental health and hopefully, like many things that we pick up from school, that it becomes part of their lifestyle. All these cannot be taken for granted or left to individual choices, given that these very choices are affected by government policies and action, and mainly with negative unintended consequences when governments narrowly pursue economic growth alone. This is the value of a more holistic development framework like the GNH Index. His Majesty the present King has stated and I quote, GNH is the bridge between the fundamental values of kindness, equality, and humanity, and the necessary pursuit of economic growth. This, I believe, is what is critical, whether for an individual or for a nation. It is also the best way to embrace uncertainty and ensure we are resilient and also come out stronger and wiser from such experiences. But having a more holistic index and clever policy making framework does not mean GNH will be automatically achieved. Ultimately, these are instruments to create the necessary institutions that will work towards well being for all. But actually, achieving it requires, among others, great leadership. This is the real secret to whatever Bhutan has achieved in the name of GNH. And as an illustration, I would like to highlight some of the actions Bhutan has taken in response to the COVID-19 pandemic that has gripped the world, which reflects GNH and its policy and practice, the values behind this timeless vision, and the leadership that is the source of inspiration and action in Bhutan. In my opinion, Bhutan's COVID-19 response is unique in many ways. Firstly, as a backdrop, it is important to understand that Bhutan is a landlocked country between the two most populated countries in the world, namely India and China. 
As of 29th December 2020, Bhutan had 632 confirmed cases of COVID-19, of which 178 are active, 445 recovered, and zero death. This in a country with a population of about 750,000 people. The majority of the 632 confirmed cases were mainly on account of Bhutanese who chose to return home during this difficult time, since local transmission is actually a very recent phenomenon. Given the many restrictions on international air travel, even their return home was facilitated by the government to arrangement of special flights. However, to ensure that the local population was protected from this deadly virus, effective quarantine measures, 21 days was introduced since mid-March 2020. The expenditure for the quarantine in hotels that would otherwise have to lay off their employees and remain closed are paid for by the royal government. This continues to this day. The following are some of the major interventions all of which were spearheaded by His Majesty the King. Firstly, like most countries, the tourism and services sector were the hardest hit. Given the dim prospects for revival of travel, layoffs began a few months into the pandemic. In Bhutan, His Majesty the King used his royal prerogative for Kidu or welfare support to be provided to all those who were laid off in the tourism and services sector. As the pandemic dragged on, this was extended to all those who were facing genuine difficulty in finding jobs. As of date, a total of 140,000 people, about 19% of the total population received this support. Secondly, working with the government, loan repayments were deferred for one year and interest payment was subsidized and paid by the government for six months for all loans. This touched the lives of over 17% of the population, businesses and individuals, and is expected to cost the government about 5% of GDP. Thirdly, in the most dense settlements in the Bhutanese towns bordering India, it was found that over 5,000 Bhutanese live across the border due to lower rents, but who now wanted to come and live inside Bhutan. Upon royal command, the Royal Bhutan Army built 1,000 housing units in 28 days that continue to provide shelter and security to this group. Youth unemployment at 10% is quite high in Bhutan. His Majesty recognized that at uncertain times like the COVID-19 pandemic, these unemployed youth can be highly susceptible to depression and antisocial behavior as they lose all hope. To ensure that this does not happen, and instead to give meaning and purpose to their lives, His Majesty the King provided accelerated and specialized trainings to over 16,000 unemployed youth who voluntarily serve as desups or guardians of peace. They serve as guards and helpers in quarantine centers. They guard the porous borders with India. They work on drinking water and irrigation projects to help protect the livelihood of the majority of the Bhutanese people who are farmers. They help with home delivery of essentials during lockdown and so on. The services of these guardians of peace in their bright orange uniforms are highly appreciated by the public. I hope I've been able to provide a better idea of how a country might use a more holistic development framework to enhance the happiness and well-being of its people in general and through the Bhutanese COVID-19 pandemic experience, demonstrate what it means to better balance the pursuit of economic growth vis-a-vis -vis the happiness of the people at times of uncertainty like the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Enhancing the well-being and happiness of people requires not only a more holistic index to capture what matters, but also leadership to inspire people into the collective action that is necessary for dealing with uncertainty and challenges along the way. I thank you for your kind attention. Tashidele.